Ooh. What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, before we get into the video, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you guys how to tie the flies that we fished today um, that ended up catching some fish. Uh, as you'll see in the video, well, you'll see the video. The fly that I'm going to tie right now is um, the fly that caught the fish in the video and is one of the big producer flies that I fish in this particular area. Um, but I think I'm going to start doing this just to kind of be a little more informative about these videos. I think, you know, a big part of, you know, having content like what I do that, you know, is valuable for you guys to watch. So you keep watching and want to watch is one entertainment value and two, uh, you know, in informational value. So when you watch it, you feel like you've, you're learning something, um, and something that you can apply wherever you go fishing later. So, um, I'm going to try and start doing some stuff where each of these videos have a little series or part or segment just like this. And I'm going to do this to just kind of bring everything full circle so you guys can kind of see exactly the process that goes into tying each of these flies beforehand. And then like the whole process of doing all that and the end goal of catching fish on the flies that we tie. So uh, let's get started real quick. Uh, I'm excited to tie this. This is a not technically balanced because it doesn't have an extension. But this is a bait fish pattern that I've kind of been fiddling with for a while now and kind of have designed, as far as I know, as much as it's my pattern, as much as it is anybody else's. But um, let's get started real quick, and I'll show you guys. You can tie this in a plethora of colors um, to match a bunch of different bait fish or food sources that all of these fish eat. So let's get started. All right, so to get started with this pattern, um, we're going to need a couple of materials that you probably aren't going to usually have. Uh, I have a 5.5 millimeter tungsten bead right here. Um, and this is a 90 degree heavy wire steelhead jig hook from Eagle Claw of all companies. I bought a pack of these hooks like probably, you know, two or three years ago and I still haven't been able to go through it. There's, there was like 300 hooks for like $7.99 each and they're strong, sharp, and I don't feel bad about losing them because it's a pretty cheap hook. So let's get started real quick. So we're basically going to get this onto our hook or onto our vise, and you'll see here that the way that I tie this, I actually force this tungsten bead all the way over the bend, and this is one of the only hooks that I've found I can actually consistently do this with. Some hooks, the bend, the angle of it's just a little bit weird with this particular bead, but um, that's the goal is to have the bead over here. If it's a little bit offsetter and not necessarily set all the way down, as long as it's a little bit more pushed over, um, you should be in the clear. And this pattern is, basically just a general bait fish pattern and you can adjust your colors according to whatever it is that you're trying to um replicate but the cool thing about this is it's specifically designed so that we it's pretty close to being balanced in the water but you can run a much larger fly um specifically where we're going to fish in this video these fish will eat bait fish you know that are three four five inches long so um it's important to be able to match that and have something a little bit longer so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start a thread base down and this is just a 210 denier uh ultra thread uh this is in black but i should be tying it in white but i ran out of my white the other day so this is what we're dealing with um and then materials can vary just depending on what you have and what you want to use um, I really, really enjoy this Snake River Fly Zero Gravity Dub. It's uh, super lightweight, um, long enough fibers to tie tails out of, and there's a little bit of UV flash and tinsel put in here to get, make it a little bit, a little more buggy looking. So we're going to start a thread base back, and basically all we're going to do is we're going to take some of our color of choice. This one's going to be gray because the specific place these fish are actually a little more gray and yellow, if that makes any sense. Kind of an interesting fly. And this Zero Gravity Dub basically just has some Marabou mixed in with some Flash. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself a nice little clump of this right here. You can see that that's a good little clump. I'm going to preen my fibers just to make sure that I can have them as long as possible. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way up here. I'm going to grab this right at the point, at the farthest point I can get it. I'm going to tie that in just like that. And now i got a nice long tail. And just to kind of fill it in a little bit more, I'll just fold this little excess back instead of cutting it, and I'll just tie it down. Okay. So that's uh, the top part of our tail. Uh, like I said, this fly is a little bit in that in a weird like gray and yellow coloration. So uh, having just kind of a hint 
of the natural hues in the fly, in my opinion, can go a long way. So here's a little bit of a yellow rabbit, um, just a zonker strip that I just ripped off a little short piece of. And now that's just gonna sit right there on the bottom, just like that. Take a sharp pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut this little piece of leather off. Okay, so the goal with these flies are to make them fishable underneath an indicator or stripped, right? So this fly is gonna ride hook point up so you're not gonna snag on bottom. And I want to build this profile out almost sit like identical to the way that I want it to look in the water. So instead of tying like a big marabou plume that's gonna go like this and get really large in the water, I'm gonna try and shape the body of this so when it's underneath an indicator and it's dead drifting, it still has the profile that I want it to as opposed to having it something very large that's meant to be stripped because when you strip the marabou, then it'll go down in size, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in a little bit of just a silver estaz right here. And if you think about the shape of most bait fish, you know, they have a teardrop shape. This specific one doesn't necessarily have that shape, but I tie it in that shape because it's just easier to, you know, build out a body this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this and with each wrap, I'm gonna preen these little fibers back. And I'm only gonna wrap this around to about three quarters of the fly. And this is a pretty quick bug. Uh, again, you can tie this with gold chenille, a different colored tails. You can make it look like a sculpin. You can make it look like a shad. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'm gonna wrap that about three quarters of the way up, maybe a little bit more, because I can always wrap back on top of it. Okay, I'm gonna cut that. So now you see our body here is just a little bit. You know, you have a nice thick profile for the body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch this, I'm gonna kind of fold this back so I can get a little couple wraps in here. So now we're about three quarters of the way there and I'm gonna do a dubbing loop. So I'm gonna wrap my thread and I'm gonna grab my little rising net uh, or my little rising bodkin that happens to have a little hook on the end that can work double as a whip finish. I'm gonna take some of my, that same dub, this is the zero gravity dub. Uh, this stuff's nice because it's short enough that you can you know, you can fold it over itself and actually get a good uh, profile out of it without it being too long. Or if you were to take, you know, each point of it, you know, you're gonna have another a two inches of material or so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of separate this to make sure it doesn't get all wrapped up on itself when I spin this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna pull this all and separate it. I'm gonna push it up a little closer to the hook. Okay, and as you can see there, we have a nice little uh, loop that hasn't been spun up yet. And I'm gonna pull this forward and I'm gonna start spinning. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna, it basically dubbing loops are nice cause it just makes it so you can create uh, a dubbing brush or some sort of chenille out of basically anything. So as you see, I've spun this up and now it's starting to look like a nice little brush. Um, it's important that you have some sort of Velcro to kind of pick this out and make sure that you get all these fibers untrapped because you want these to be nice and long. And what I'll do is I'll wet my fingers and I'll pull this back so it's all going one direction, as you can see, just like that. You lose some material, that's okay. You didn't want that material on there anyways. So I'm gonna do a couple wraps just like this. And all this is gonna do is this is gonna help me build a profile on the fly right here, just like this. Okay. Perfect. And now, when this is wet, the body of this fly is only going to get as wide as that marabou from that dub. Okay, so like it'll get you know a little bit wider, but more than like or more or less, it will drape over itself, right? And if you do this and you don't feel like you don't have enough dub around the body, uh, it's pretty easy to just grab a little bit of your dub. So you can kind of just set it down lightly tie it in and then fold it back and wrap in front of it. And now I feel like that's kind of right where I want it. I like that profile. Okay. So I'm going to basically just whip finish. And this is the finished flyer right there. Like I said, pretty simple uh, streamer pattern and it's easy to dead drift underneath an indicator. You're kind of going to want a pretty big indicator for this because that bead is so heavy. Um, but yeah, Pretty simple. Uh, this fly has, like I said, it has that little yellow coloration on the belly or on the, yeah, on the belly of it. So I'm just gonna take a yellow Sharpie and this way you can kind of get a nice color contrast and segmentation in a body 
without having to use a bunch of weird tying techniques to get it separated. And as you can see now, I have a yellow belly and a gray top. And that's it. That's the fly that we caught the fish on today. Um, and it actually was pretty deadly. Uh, like I said, pretty, pretty simple bug, so it was a quick tie, but let's uh, get into the video and see how we do with this. going on you guys good morning it's uh five in the morning we i'm waiting for my buddy josh to drive up uh, from salt lake and we're gonna go fish one of my favorite places on the planet um oh this fly caught coffee is so good anyways um we're gonna go um Fish for some big cutthroat, lake trout, and a white fish on a lake close to home. Um, this is one of my favorite places that I've ever fished because before me and Kyle spent a bunch of time out here fishing, I had never seen another person fish this this time of year doing the techniques that we're doing. Never saw another person. Um, you know, we went out, caught some fish, caught some really, really big fish that were pretty rad. And now I've seen a couple people out there. I don't care. I think it's awesome. And honestly, if anybody's willing to go out and suffer in this horrendous place in the winter time, like we do, they deserve all the fish in the world. Um, but we're gonna go get this checked out and uh, see if we can catch some fish. It's still a little early in the season, but I actually went yesterday and caught a pretty solid, like two foot cutty, um, 24 inches. So it was, it was a good fish. Um, and that was just in the middle of the day and usually it sucks in the middle of the day. So we got to get here before the sun's up and we fish until around eight or nine and that's it. Um, so probably gonna be a pretty short video today. Uh, hopefully full of some fish. Um, we're going to be fishing some, um, balanced and not balanced, but heavy jig Cisco patterns. Um, super interesting fly specifically designed for this place. Um, cause all these fish move in from super deep water, um, in the spring, summer and fall into the really, really shallow water in this winter time because of the fact that there are, um, five endemic species of fish. That means that are only found in Bear Lake in this place that all spawn come winter time. And so what happens is all of the food for the big lake trout and cut cutties moves in shallow so the fish follow them in making them targetable for people like me who you know only really want to fish on the for a, on a, with a fly rod for these fish so stay tuned josh is going to be here in a minute and uh, we're going to drive up it's going to be pitch block the entire drive up so can't really shoot anything but hopefully we'll get there the conditions won't be too rough um and we'll get into some fish so stay tuned all right gang we're here uh it's pretty windy as you can tell by my outfit um i'm gonna try and catch some fish uh conditions actually seem pretty solid for fishing not for being warm but we'll see if we can get some
Josh. Woo. Hey. Josh. Nice, little guy. Nothing big, I saw him come up. And he sure enough came up and ate the, ate the Cisco. Look at that fish. Pretty small for this place. But a great fish elsewhere. Josh! Woo! <laughs> that was dope. Okay. That sucked. That's what happens at this place almost every time we go. Only reason I keep going is because there's a chance at a good fish. But that sucked. We're gonna get out of here. Short video. Um, I'm gonna post a video before this of how to tie that fly that we fished that we got almost skunked on. Just so you guys can get skunked too. Later.